So when it comes to heart rate sensors and smartwatches, one company has kind of been the king of the hill when it comes to accuracy for quite a few years now, Apple with their Apple Watch. It's kind of crazy to see how closely it actually compares to a chest heart rate strap for lots of different activities, even stuff like weight training, which is a notoriously hard activity for wrist-based optical heart rate sensors to track right. But Garmin just came out with their latest fifth generation Elevate heart rate sensor on their new Epix Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro line of watches, and these new sensors improved actually quite a bit from their previous generation sensor. Garmin's previous generation heart rate sensors were good for steady state cardio like running, indoor cycling, as well as road biking, but didn't do as well for the harder to track activities like weight training, high intensity interval training, as well as mountain biking, and that was exactly the aim with the fifth generation sensors to perform better for those kinds of activities, and I can definitely confirm it's a very good sensor. But that begs the question question, how does Garmin's new and improved fifth generation heart rate sensor compare to the heart rate sensor on the Apple Watch? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out in today's video. So I've been collecting tons of data for this comparison video where I tested them back to back with an Apple Watch Ultra on one wrist and then a Garmin Epix Pro or Phoenix 7 Pro on the other in real world tests, using them for everything from running to road biking to mountain biking, as well as weight training and high intensity interval training. But not only that, I even went ahead and switched them and tested them on different wrists because you can sometimes see different results from one side or another due to slight differences in our anatomies. And it's not like I just did one test with each wrist and then called it done either. I tested them multiple times just to see if the results, whether good or bad, were consistent because all sensors can have bad days and good days. And I was kind of surprised with some of these results and I can tell you right now that I didn't necessarily see a clear winner here either and what I found is that accuracy can depend on the kind of activity that you're doing. With most activities, both of these are going to be pretty much spot on, but with other activities, the Apple Watch Ultra did better and then with some others, the Garmin did better. So before we get into the actual results, just for a quick primer about these kinds of sensors, in the most basic sense, they're shining light into your skin, which then gets reflected back into the sensor to collect your heart rate. And these kinds of sensors usually do a pretty good job with steady state workouts where there's not much wrist flexion or arm movement. So think like indoor cycling when you're stationary. But then with other types of workouts, you start to introduce variables for the sensor to deal with. Like with running, you're swinging your arms. Then with road biking outside, there's stuff like vibrations and bumps on the road, which can make the watch move on your wrist. And then you have even harder stuff like mountain biking where the watch may bounce around from all the rough terrain. And then with weight training, you have a lot of wrist flexion while gripping onto dumbbells as well as a lot of varying arm movement. Basically all things that these kinds of sensors don't like because all those factors can affect blood flow as well as keeping solid and consistent contact with your skin, which is needed to get accurate results. And that's basically the holy grail when it comes to accuracy is for those harder activities, making it more accurate in situations where there's limitations with this kind of technology. Using a chest heart rate strap will get you the most accurate results, but I think most of us would prefer not to have to wear an external accessory like this if we don't have to. So that's why we're seeing wrist-based optical heart rate sensor technology evolve. So just to give you an idea of how I actually performed these tests. So for the Apple Watch, I was using the Apple Watch Ultra. And then for the Garmin, I was using either the 51 millimeter Epix Pro or the 47 millimeter Phoenix 7 Pro. So in terms of weight, the 51 millimeter Epix Pro is the closest compared to the Apple Watch Ultra when it comes to the cases themselves. And the reason I'm mentioning weight is that I found that weight can play a factor in terms of accuracy especially for activities where the watch could bounce around. So think like mountain biking over rough terrain. And then when it comes to the bands I used, I used a trail loop for the Apple Watch Ultra. And then for the Epix Pro, I used Garmin's UltraFit band, both of which provide the most secure and customized fit for sports, keeping them nice and snug on the wrist. And then just for even more data, I also tested the 47 millimeter Phoenix 7 Pro, which is just slightly lighter than both the Apple Watch Ultra as well as the 51 millimeter Epix Pro, more just to see if it performed any better than the 51 millimeter Epix Pro since it's a little bit lighter. And in terms of how how I wore them, so I used the best practice of wearing them about an inch or so above my wrist bone where there's more flesh for the sensor to work with, and I was just wearing one watch on each wrist. And then for comparison, I was either using a Polar H10 heart rate strap or a Garmin HRM Pro heart rate strap, and then I was also using a Polar Verity Sense optical heart rate sensor on my bicep on one arm, and then another arm-based optical heart rate sensor on the other. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it, and on the following charts, the Apple Watch Ultra will be highlighted in purple, and then the Garmin will be highlighted in orange. So starting out with the steady state indoor bike ride. This is basically the activity I use as a baseline when it comes to accuracy, just because almost all watches get this right. It's a very controlled environment and I rarely see hiccups with this kind of activity. And that's very much the case here for both watches. The Apple Watch Ultra was spot on and so was the 51 millimeter Epix Pro, all good. And then just for comparison, here's another ride with the Apple Watch Ultra versus the Phoenix 7 Pro. And again, basically perfect results out of both of them. A few little wobbles from the Apple Watch Ultra at the beginning here and a little blip from the Phoenix 7 Pro over here, but that's just kind of splitting hairs. Oh, and then for an example for intervals, here's another workout. And as you can see here, both watches perform basically flawlessly. 
And then moving on to some running, this is where we start to introduce arm movement into the equation. And this is where we'll start to see more interesting things. So on this run here, at the beginning, we see that all the sensors needed a little bit of time to lock on, which is typical with these kinds of sensors. But after about a minute, they're all on the same page. In fact, very close to each other. About two thirds of the way in though is where we start to see them wander just a little bit with the Epix Pro reading like four to five beats per minute high at most, but all in all, nothing crazy and still very usable data. However, then on this run, I switched wrists and here's where the Apple Watch Ultra was going a little bit over and a little bit under here at the beginning. A smidge high of a reading here out of the Epix Pro and then a little bit high over here from the Apple Watch Ultra. Either way though, still a pretty good result out of both watches. And then switching back on this run, we see that the Apple Watch Ultra actually took quite some time to lock on a heart rate, a little bit longer than usual. But then again, we see the Epix Pro be just a little bit off on some portions of the run here. Nothing crazy, but not spot on either. And then at the end of the run is when I started to increase pace where my arm swing and form was probably getting a little bit more sloppy. And here's where we can see that all the sensors start to get a little bit off, but none of them missed the boat either. They all stayed close enough to each other. And then just for comparison's sake, switching things up to the smaller 47 millimeter Phoenix 7 Pro, on this run, it was essentially perfect out of both watches. Really, really good in fact. And then switching wrist on this run, a little bit more off actually on both watches. Again, nothing crazy, but not quite as picture perfect as that previous example. And then for one final example, switching wrist back again, then we have this run here where both watches again weren't picture perfect with the Phoenix 7 Pro reading a little bit high here, and then the Ultra dropping out a little bit on this increase in heart rate, and then a little bit of a high reading here closer to the end. Overall though, these are still pretty good results for the most part out of all the watches for running. Some very good examples of accuracy from all the watches in most cases, but also cases where all of them also wandered a little bit here and there. Again, it's hard to expect perfect results with every single workout, but there were no massive failures either. But now let's move on to some road biking as well as some mountain biking. So with road biking, this is where you start to introduce variables like gripping onto the handlebars as well as bumps and vibrations in the road, which can throw off these kinds of sensors. But with road biking, all the watches performed really well here and the results were very consistent between the two, like on these two rides. So on the top ride here, other than the beginning of the ride where the Epix Pro read a little bit low and the Apple Watch Ultra read a little bit high, the rest of the ride was basically perfect. And then on the bottom ride, again, a little bit of a low reading from the Epix Pro when it first started out, and then just an ever so slight blip here out of the Ultra where it read five beats per minute low. But realistically, again, great results out of both. And then for some examples with the Phoenix 7 Pro, on this ride here, we see a few places with the Phoenix 7 Pro where it's just a little bit behind to pick up the rise in heart rate, and then just a slight drop here, but the Apple Watch Ultra was essentially perfect. But then on this ride, a few more places with both watches where they wandered, a few little spikes at the Phoenix 7 Pro here and there, and then some higher readings at the end from the Apple Watch Ultra. But overall, just like running, all the watches really did handle road biking well. And I forgot to mention that some of those rides actually had some gravel in there too, all very usable data. Now in the whole scheme of things though, all those previous examples are activities that are easier for these kinds of sensors to track accurately. But now let's move on to those activities that pose lots of challenges for wrist-based optical heart rate sensors like mountain mountain biking, weight training, as well as high intensity interval training. These kinds of activities basically push the limits of this kind of technology. So starting out with some mountain biking on this ride here, this was nearly perfect out of both watches, like crazy good actually. The dips that you see here are actually from the arm based optical heart rate sensor, but the Epix Pro and Apple Watch Ultra did a phenomenal job. And then this right here was also quite good. A minor blip from the Epix Pro right here, and then a minute or so here from the Apple Watch Ultra where it read high, but all in all, this is pretty great for mountain biking. But like I said, not all results are gonna be perfect, so let's move on to some rides where I saw some more interesting stuff. So like on this ride, there was a spot right here where the Epix Pro read low, and then this spot where it read high, and then down here, the Ultra dropped out for a few moments. And what I wanna point out too is that I also have the elevation profile included below, and these are basically on the downhill sections where the watches start to bounce around a bit more. Plus you're gripping onto the handlebars probably a lot tighter, and this is where these kinds of sensors can get thrown off. But what you'll notice is that for the uphill sections, they're basically perfect. And then here's another example of that where on these rougher downhill sections, the Apple Watch Ultra lost the plot, but the Epix Pro did a little bit better job actually. And basically that's kind of what I found with mountain biking is that the Ultra doesn't seem to do as good a job of locking back on when it loses it. So both sensors can get thrown off of course, like we see here on these three different rides, but the Epix Pro seems to do a better job at locking back on when it loses it. So that's mountain biking, but now let's move on to weight training and high intensity interval training. And these kinds of workouts are basically the other super challenging activity for a wrist-based optical heart rate sensor to get right due to all the gripping as well as the varying arb movement. It's kind of their worst nightmare. 
But even so, this is a very good result for this convectivity for both watches. So if we take a look at the 51mm Epix Pro in orange, it had a few challenges with these tricep extensions here where it was a bit slow to respond to the increase in heart rate, and then it was a bit wobbly on a few of the peaks and valleys of the high intensity intervals at the end. However, then at the beginning with these bicep curls, the Apple Watch Ultra had a bit of a high reading. This workout definitely goes to the Apple Watch Ultra, but the Epix Pro wasn't that far behind, really. And then on this workout, again, very respectable results out of both watches, but again, the Apple Watch Ultra was closer to the external heart rate sensors than the Epix Pro, where the Epix Pro was basically a little farther behind tracking the increases in heart rate with some of the sets. And by the way, this was also the same trend I saw with the Phoenix 7 Pro, where it was just a little bit farther behind both the external heart rate straps as well as the Apple Watch Ultra. There was the set right here where the Ultra was a little bit more behind, but what's interesting is that on the following three sets, it was actually right in line with the Phoenix 7 Pro, although both of them were a little bit behind the external heart rate straps, which is to be expected. And then with this workout, there was that higher reading out of the Phoenix 7 Pro on the first set, interestingly enough, and then a little dropout right here. But other than those two spots, it did an okay job, but the Ultra certainly was closer to the external heart rate monitors. But overall, those are still very usable results for this kind of an activity. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, these are the kind of results I've seen from some other watches for weight training. So really, the Epix Pro as well as the Ultra do a very good job with weight training. So while it appears that Garmin's fifth generation sensor does a better job with mountain biking, with weight training, I'd have to go the Ultra. So with all that, what did we actually learn from all this? Well, first off, neither of these will be perfect in every single situation for every single workout, just because both of these will have good days as well as bad days, but there are also limitations with this kind of technology. But even so, these are still two of the best wrist-based optical heart rate sensors on the market for a smartwatch. But in regards to these two sensors and which one is best, well, I think it kind of depends on what kind of activity that you're doing. So while both do a good job at the majority of activities, as we saw, there were some activities where the Apple Watch Ultra performed a bit better for me, and then somewhere the Garmin did a little bit better. And for those activities, if you do want the most accurate results, that's where using an external heart rate sensor is gonna be your best bet. And that's why both of these do have the capability of pairing with an external heart rate strap because both companies totally know that there are limits to what these sensors can do. Anyhow, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button down below. And also subscribe to the channel for plenty more videos just like this that are coming soon. But in the meantime, happy running, happy riding, happy lifting, or whatever else you'd like to do. And we will see you in the next video.